Yeah, yeah. Now spin it. Spin it. Yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. You're going to learn how to do this today. Heck yeah. <laughs> yes. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So this talk is not about how to learn to skateboard, but rather look at my face. This talk is about vitality, extreme optimism. Um, I'm sorry, I'm nervous, okay? So <laughs> now I will admit I have a belly full of sunshine and that has given me a great privilege to be able to, as a friend, and as a Red Cross humanitarian and a disaster responder, to get to observe where optimism succeeds and where it fails in crisis. I've carefully studied how people rise and how they shine after a storm. And there's one thing I know for sure. Happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from our own actions. So this is not about how to be optimistic. I don't even think that's a thing. This is about how to do optimistic. And I get it, we're busy and life is hard, so I've really honed in on three specific steps that are very efficient. You have to pay attention to when you're happy and do those things more, even when you're afraid and with gratitude. So let's get started. Step one, pay attention to when you're happy and do those things more. I'm not nervous now, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got something to say up here. <laughs> Pay attention when you're happy and do those things more. So when I was going through my own dark period several years ago, I kept trying to be happy. And I'd set these goals for myself. And it not only didn't work, it kind of pissed me off. And then it occurred to me one day, maybe instead of using my ambition, I could use my curiosity to discover a way out. Notice when I was happy, do those things more, see if anything changed. Now this not only worked for me, it actually inspired these little 60-day experiments that I do with myself. Anytime I have a kind of healthy feeling that I like, I'll do that thing for 60 days just to see what happens. You know, is my life better if I uh, run every day, or if I meditate, or if I go for a walk with a friend? Now, I love this process because there's no guilt and there's no pressure. The only thing I have to do is that thing for 60 days, give it its due. And if it doesn't work for me, I never, ever, ever have to do it again. <laughs> and if it does work for me, it's not that hard to adopt it as a habit because my body kind of longs for it after 60 days. Now, I have done dozens of these. Um, they take seconds or minutes out of my day, and many are embarrassing, silly. Um, they may seem kind of dumb, but they have added up inside of me to, to be this just rich bouquet of a hundred different colorful blooms that just keep blossoming. And there's nothing dumb about that. When was the last time you had a blossom of happy? What would it be like if that was part of your routine? So I'm gonna share with you a couple of mine. There were these teeny changes I made that massively transformed my life. The first, I decided to have exactly one cup of coffee per day. Now, I broke my addiction to caffeine and I was a little more calm, as you would expect. But I also deeply learned to deeply enjoy a thing. I would take the coffee and I would smell it. I knew I only got one cup. <laughs> so, you know, I'd have a little alone time with those first few sips <laughs> and I'd hold them in my mouth and then I'd lick the edge of the cup and then I'd put water in it and I'd drink the water. <laughs> it's crazy, right? I mean, it's crazy. But what happened was I learned to wring every drop of enjoyment out of not only the coffee, but of all of these other things that were already in my life, I learned how to savor. The second one, play. The second one, play. Okay. So play for only a minute every day, if only for a minute. 
Now, I had more fun, and some of you know this has created priceless memories in my life, but it's also been a source of energy, and it's unlocked my creativity. Most importantly, I learned that play is my meditation. It's how I grieve what is maddening or tragic or kind of senseless in life. Three, it is as essential two, to me one, as go. sleep. Okay, watch this. That's where she knocks me down. That was definitely. How was it, Kirsten? Are you glad you did it? Yeah. <laughs> Play is how I finally learned to let go. So pay attention to when you're happy. Do those things more. I want more of this in my life. Thrill, butterflies, humility. So I'm going to do this every day, starting today. And I'm going to do a second experiment. I hate the feeling of asking for help, but I love everything that transpires after I do it. So I'm going to ask for help every day. Both of these scare me, and I'm guessing change probably scares you a little bit too. So on that point, step two, be afraid, do it anyways, but properly. Love, create, believe. These things are kind of scary. I mean, you can get hurt, but only if you use optimism outside of its proper place and time. Let me show you. Being realistic is how you understand what's happening now. Doing optimistic is how you cope and move forward. There's this dangerous myth that these two can't coexist, but that's just not true. Together, they actually manifest change in the future. So to help you with this, I've made for you a very scientific continuum <laughs> that shows you which idealist, like which optimistic ideals are safe in the present versus the future. Now, today, in the present, we have to get real. You want to stick with things like being present, love, mercy. And then you can use hope and learning to start to move. But something like idealism in the present, that's going to put your head in the clouds. You're going to lose your footing. How often have we gotten hurt in a relationship because we were dancing around in a dream? Right? You just can't do that. But on the same token, if we're going to create lift, if we're going to create a different future, we need to do things like imagine and create. Otherwise, we lock our life into this flat trajectory that kind of falls down into a rut, and we lose momentum. Our soul won't stir. How often have we gotten hurt because we failed to imagine something better for ourselves? We can't do that either. So it's both. Our lives, our love, our work, the hum of our daily lives, all of, things, all of these things can get better if we do both. So go ahead and ask the question, what if, you know? But then ask the question, what if? The woman you see in this picture refers to herself as old mama. She and her neighbors are explaining to us the very difficult challenges they face in a slum in Nairobi. In order to really understand them, we had to be realistic. We had to be present, merciful. But then, in time, the discussion started to expand. Together, we were able to imagine how, with the help of global tech partners, we could make their community more resilient to disaster with things like 3D printers and robots. The ideas were so breathtaking because they were both so rooted in reality grounded, but also expansive and reaching for the future. Old Mama ended this session by saying, I am hopeful because I think I could learn to use these things, and I think it could teach others in a way that they would learn. I am hopeful too, mostly because I feel like you saw us today. That's what realistic and optimistic look like together. I am hopeful too, mostly because I feel like you saw us today. Optimism is intelligent. It is a real thing that creates real things. So next time somebody treats you like you're living in a fantasy, see it for what it is. It's cowardice, you guys, and have mercy. 
You have permission to aspire and, and envision without apology. Stand up for a way to move forward. Peace in yourself and in our world depends on it. Okay, that got a little serious. Let's go back to skateboarding. So today, now I could get hurt. It's likely even. So um, I'm gonna take the necessary precautions and I'm gonna do what my nephew suggests here in this picture and wear the right gear. Those are knee pads, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you laughed. I was so scared you wouldn't laugh. <laughs> but there is no harm. There is only joy and possibility in us closing our eyes and imagining a day soon when me and the butterflies in my tummy are cruising through the park on a sunny day, happier because we learned to ride. Step three. Wield your mighty gratitude. My mom and dad, both of whom are here, um, about 10 years ago, their house burned down in a home fire while my dad, while they were at the doctor getting the news that he had stage three cancer. When my mom called to tell me that day, she started the conversation by saying, well, we were so lucky. We weren't home. We still have time. I have a friend who's a recovering alcoholic, and she's been sober for several years. I asked her one day, do you regret your alcoholism, given the fact that you know it's harmed your family? God, no, she responded. This is how I learned to live and forgive. I am so lucky about an unforgiving, relentless disease. And about a year ago, I was with a family right after a tornado went through, they had kicked out and climbed through their laundry chute. And while the tornado was still in sight, with their baby in their arms, barefoot, they ran across glass and shards of wood. When they told me the story, this is where they stood, where their home and neighborhood full of trees had been. The first words out of their mouth. Well, we were so lucky because and they talked about the one thing they still had, each other. When I go to the ground on disaster, the words I hear most from both survivors and volunteers, we are so lucky. And these people are still grateful. So my point is simply this. Gratitude, seeing where you are fortunate, will bring negative to its knees. You can stare into the sun. I have observed that it is gratitude that allows anyone to survive anything. So, when your coffee smells good, take notice. It's not a small thing. Even when it hurts, look for humanity. For this. Have thanks. We get to be here at TEDx North Central College. Work on this. Gratitude is work that pays off. So there you have it. So what scares you a little, but might make you happier if you did it every day, carefully? What could possible feel like? Is it possible that with the mighty roots of gratitude sort of bolstering you up, that you might do a 60-day experiment with me? Because I kind of want to get on this thing, but I'm really scared, and I think I need help. So, will you? All right, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Thank you.